Yabba dabba do! Here we go with chapter number 10, the circle, and this is lesson number 4, the equation of a tangent to a circle. First thing we need to know then is what is a tangent in relation to a circle? Go on, Sahana, put us out our misery. Brilliant. Well done. If a straight line touches a circle at just one point, it is said to be a tangent, just like this. You can see the straight line is touching the circle just at one point, it's touching a point P, so that there would be a tangent, this straight line. The magical thing woo, about the tangent is that where it meets, if you draw a line from the centre to that point, then obviously that would be a radius, and the radius meets the tangent at right angles, or obviously the diameter as well. What we're going to do then in this lesson is to work out the equation of the tangent. And obviously a tangent is a straight line, so we're really wanting the equation of a straight line. So for that, we can use the gradient of the radius. So if you know the centre and you know the point, you could work out the gradient. y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. And you could then use that point P, that's a point on the tangent, to work out the equation. Really, what you want to do is you want to think back to chapter 1 and you think gradient point equation, way back from the olden days. So let's try a few examples. Example 1, the point P. 2, 3, lies in the circle, x plus 1 all squared, plus y take away 1 all squared equals 13. Find the equation of the tangent at P. What you may wish to do is to imagine that. So you may wish to go off to the side and draw it. But the first thing you may want to do before that is you may wish to write down the centre of the circle. Remember, a circle in this form here will have a centre, negative 1, 1. Well done if you got that. So you've got the centre of the circle and you know you've got that point. So you're wanting something like that. There's the centre, there's that point, and it's the equation of the tangent at P that you are wanting. So to do that, you know these two points, you know the centre and you know the point. So the first thing you would have to do is to think, right, well, if I'm wanting the gradient of the tangent, first of all, I could work out the gradient of the radius. And because it's a right angle, I can then work out the perpendicular gradient. So to begin with, get the gradient between C and P of the radius. So to get that, y2 take y1 over x2 take x1. If you do that, you'd have y2 take y1, so 3 take away 1 over 2 take away negative 1, which will give you 2 over, that would become an add, so it's 2 over 3. So that then is going to be the gradient of the radius. As I just said, if you're wanting to get the gradient of the tangent, well, it's a perpendicular gradient, so really you're flipping this upside down, woo, and you're changing the sign, so this is positive, so the gradient of the tangent will be a negative, and that will give you negative 3 over 2. From there, what would you do, Kung Fu Matthew? Brilliant, well done. So you would use the gradient of the tangent, which is negative 2 over 3, and you would use that point of contact, which is 2, 3, and you would sub that into the equation of a straight line, y minus b equals m bracket x minus a. So from that then, you would have y take away 3, so you're taking away, make sure you are using this point of contact, so it's y take away 3 equals the gradient negative 3 over 2, so negative 3 over 2 bracket x take away, and then you're taking away this value of a, so it would be x take away 2. From there, what it probably do is to think, well, you've got a fraction here, fractions are always a bit harder to deal with, so let's get rid of that fraction by multiplying both sides by 2. So you're undoing this, divide by 2, really you could move that over, or multiply by 2. From there, if you do that, if you multiply the y by 2, you get 2y. Multiply the negative 3 by 2, you get the negative 6. And that would equal, you're undoing then this divide by 2, so you'd have negative 3x take away 2. Or negative 3 bracket x take away 2. From there, just multiply out the brackets and just simplify. Gather your like terms. So you've got the negative 6 there, the 6 there. Just put them together. So add 6 to both sides, so you would get the 12. I'm also moving the x over. So as long as you've got something that looks similar to this and that would be the equation of your tangent. Example number two. Show that the point A, 3, negative 2, lies on the circle with equation x take away 2 all squared plus y plus 1 all squared equals 2. HSD, Liam, how do you show this? Brilliant. You can use substitution. So if A lies on the circle, you're using this coordinate, A, 
it's telling you it lies on the circle. So x is 3 and y is negative 2. And if you substitute them into the equation of the circle, well, it should satisfy this equation. So let's do that. Taking the left hand side then, so x take away 2 all squared plus y plus 1 all squared. If you take that, let's substitute the values of x and y in and see if we get 2. So from that, you'd have 3 take away 2, replacing x with 3, replace y with negative 2, so negative 2 plus 1, all squared. Simplify that, you get 1 squared plus negative 1 squared, which gives you 1 add 1, which is woo, 2. So that is going to equal the 2 on the right hand side. So really, your left hand side equals the right hand side. And because of that, well, it means your equation is satisfied. So you could say that the 3 negative 2 lies on the circle. Part B, find the equation of the tangent at A. Once again, similar to example one, you may wish to sketch that just off to the side, do a rough sketch. But first of all, you're probably best writing down the center of the circle. Remember, if you have the equation of the circle in that form there, it's easy enough to read off the x and the y coordinates. So here you've got a negative two, so the center will be two. And here you've got a one, so you'd have a negative one for the y. So that's the center of that circle. If you do a rough sketch, well, you've got the center of that circle with two, negative one. You know that the point A, three, negative two lies in the line, and you're wanting the tangent at A. So you've got the circle, and then you've got this line that's touching just at A. Obviously, again, because it is a tangent, it meets the radius at right angles. Yes. So you can then work out the gradient of the radius between C and A. So to do that, again, take these two points and you do y2 take y1 over x2 take away x1. So you've got negative 2 take away negative 1 over 3 take away 2. Work that out and this would give you a negative 2 add 1, which is negative 1, and obviously 3 take 2 is 1. Negative 2 divided by 1. Uh, sorry, negative 1 divided by 1 just gives you negative 1. From there, though, we don't want to use that gradient. We're wanting the perpendicular gradient. So to get the perpendicular gradient, again, you can flip that and change the sign. Maybe think about it as this fraction here if you aren't unsure. But if you flip that, you still get 1 over negative 1, but change uh, the whole thing from a negative to a positive. So the gradient of the tangent would just be 1. From there... Well, you want to use the gradient of the tangent and use this point of contact in order to get the equation. So, it's a straight line, gradient point equation. So y minus b equals m bracket x minus a. You'd have y take away negative two, which is y add two, equals the gradient's one, uh, bracket x take away three. If you multiply out the brackets, simplify that, you can subtract two from both sides and you'd have y equals x take away five or y take away x equals negative 5, write it in some other form if you want, as long as you have simplified it. Example number 3. Show that p negative 1, 2 lies on the circle with equation x squared plus y squared, minus 2x, minus 3y, minus 1 equals 0. And then find the equation of the tangent at p. So this example is very similar to example number 2. So the first thing you want to do, HSD Liam, tell us one more time. Oh, what a guy. Perfect. You are wanting to use a substitution. So you know x at this point is negative 1, y at this point is 2. If you sub the x and the y values into the equation of the circle, well, it should satisfy the equation. In other words, the left-hand side should equal the right-hand side, or in other words, 0. So doing that then, that's the left-hand side, the equation of the circle. Uh, substitute in x and y, so you're substituting in the negative 1 in place of x, the 2 in place of y, so you'd have negative 1 all squared plus 2 all squared, and so on. If you multiply out the brackets here, you're just thinking take away 2 times negative 1 will give you plus 2, and so on. Simplify that, and you get down to 0. Just be very careful with the negatives. We are getting down to 0. That is what the left-hand side would equal. The, the right-hand side also equals 0. So you can say that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side. Yeah! From there then, because of this, you can say that negative 1, 2 satisfies the equation, and so that point lies on the circle. Yeah. 
So, part B, find the equation of the tangent at P. So once again, there is a tangent, and you know that, and you're wanting to, oh God. So, part B, find the equation of the tangent at point P. So for that, once again, you are thinking there's a circle, there's that point P that the tangent is uh, meeting the circle and you want to get the equation of that straight line, that tangent. So to do that, you may wish to first of all write down the center of this circle. So remember to get the center when it's in this form, take the x uh, coefficient, half it change the sign, Take the y coefficient, half it change the sign, and you can get the center of the circle. If you're unsure about this, look back to lesson number three in this chapter, the lesson before this. From there, you may wish to do a little sketch. So there is your circle. You've got the center with one and then three over two, and you've got that point P that the tangent meets the circle with negative one, two. To get the equation of this tangent, you're thinking gradient point equation. So we need the gradient of the tangent. Remember the gradient's perpendicular to the gradient of the radius. So the first thing you need to do is to think, right, well, let's work out the gradient between P and C of that line there, that radius. So to do that, you would have Y2 take Y1 over X2 take X1. So this time I'm doing two take away three over two over negative one take away one which will give you a half, two take away one and a half, just gives you a half, over negative two. If you've got a half and you divide by negative two, well, first of all, think a half divided by two would give you a quarter, and you'd also have the negative as well, so it'd be negative one quarter. That is the gradient of the radius, but you're wanting the gradient of the tangent, and to get the gradient of the tangent, Sammy, you... Good. You can flip that and you can change the sign. It's the perpendicular gradient that you want. So the gradient of the tangent would be 4 over 1, uh, which is just the same as 4. From there then, using the gradient of the tangent and that point of contact P, you can think Y minus B equals M bracket X minus A. From there then, using this point P, you'd have Y take away 2 equals 4, the gradient, bracket X take away negative 1, which is X plus 1. From there, multiply out the brackets, so y take away 2 equals 4x plus 4, and from there, I'm just going to add 2 to both sides. So y would equal 4x plus 6, and that is the equation of the tangent. Example number 4. The diagram, woo, diagram, shows a circle center P with equation x squared plus y squared plus 6x plus 4y plus 8 equals 0. Find the equation of the tangent at point A. You can see there is point A here, and that is negative 1, negative 1, which lies on the circle. Part B, the tangent crosses the y-axis at B, so you can see that. There's a tangent that's going through the y-axis. Find the equation of the circle with AB as a diameter. We'll get on to that bit in a second, but first of all, find the equation of the tangent at A. So the first thing that you want to do for this, again, is you think, right, well, what's the center of this circle? If you know the center, you can then work out the gradient of the radius. You can flip that to get the perpendicular gradient or the gradient of the tangent, and then think gradient point equation. So first thing, the center of this circle. What would you have for that, Leah? Perfect, well done. The center of this circle, half that change of sign, half this coefficient change of sign, and you get negative three and negative two. So that is going to be point P. From there, you can work out the gradient of the radius between P and A, and that would equal y2 take y1 over x2 take away x1. So you would have negative 1 take away negative 2 over negative 1 take away negative 3, which will give you negative 1 plus 2, which is 1, and then negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. From there then, we know the gradient between P and A is going to be a half, but we're wanting the gradient of this tangent. So to get that, flip it, change the sign, perpendicular gradient then would be negative 2. After that then, you have the point A, that is the point of contact, you have the gradient of the tangent with negative 2, and you can use y minus b equals m bracket x minus a. So from there, make sure you are using this point A, so you'd have y take away negative 1, which is y plus 1, equals the gradient negative 2, uh, and you would have x take away negative 1 again, which is x plus 1. From there, multiply out the brackets, 
gather your like terms, simplify that, and you'd have y equals negative 2x take away 3. And that is the equation of the tangent. So that is your answer for part A. Part B then, the tangent crosses the y-axis at B. Find the equation of the circle with AB as a diameter. So what that means then is that you're going to have a circle that has AB as the diameter. So you'll have a circle that's hopefully drawn by that. And between A and B, you've got the diameter. So you want to get the equation of that circle. Obviously, to get the equation of a circle, you need to know the center and you need to know the length of the radius. So how would we go about getting that? What's the first thing that you would have to find? Mary Lou, help us out. Brilliant, we need to know this point B. If we know this point A, we need to know B in order to work out the length of the diameter. So to get point B, how do we do that, Mary Lou? Good, that lies on the equation of the tangent. So the equation of the tangent, y equals negative 2x take away 3, and we know the, this line is going to cross the y-axis when x equals 0. This point B is going to be 0 something. So that is the first thing that you would do. Well done, Mary Lou. So you've got y equals negative 2x take away 3, and it cuts the y-axis when x equals 0. If x equals 0 then, you've got negative 2 times 0. So in other words, y equals 0 take away 3, so y is negative 3. So we now know this point B. Again, we're wanting the equation of this circle. So we know point A and we know point B. Uh, from there, we also need to know the centre of the circle. Olivia, how would you get that? Brilliant, it's just the midpoint between A and B. So we've got point A and we've got point B. So the midpoint of AB then, remember you can add the X coordinates and half them, add the Y coordinates and half them, and that means the center then is going to be negative a half, negative two. So that is the center of this circle. Uh, how would we go about getting the radius, Andrew? Good, really you could just use the distance formula. You could use that, let's call the center C, C for center, uh, as it says here. So really you could work out the distance between C and A or C and B and that would be your radius. So to do that, let's just say the radius squared equals, well I'm just going to use B and C, so it's BC squared. So to get that you would use the distance formula. So remember you're wanting to take point B which is 0, negative 3, you're wanting to take point C and from that you can just subtract the x coordinates and square it. Subtract the y coordinates and square it and you would get that. That would become then 0 take away negative half is a half all squared. Uh, plus negative 3 take away negative 2 would give you negative 1 squared which gives you a quarter plus 1 which is 5 over 4. So that is what the radius squared is going to be. If you think about it though, our equation is x minus a all squared plus y minus b all squared equals r squared. So we don't actually have to go and find out what the radius itself is. We're happy enough getting r squared. And from there, if we know the center is negative a half, negative two, if we know the radius squared is five over four, we can sub that into the equation. So you'd have y, uh, x, sorry, x take away negative a half, which is x plus a half all squared, plus y take away negative two, which is y plus two, all squared, and that would equal your five over four, because that is what r squared is. That is how you would do that question, and that's the equation of that funky little circle here. Woo, funky little circle. From there, try some of these questions. There are four examples, go back to any if you are unsure, but it's basically just finding the equation of the tangent to a circle. Good luck, enjoy. Circles.